Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at China's moon mission. So let's dive right into it. So manned moon mission is the key here, basically triple M. So the last manned moon mission we had happened during Cold War era. This era came after World War II. So suffice to say, thankfully Cold War never got warm basically so we are kind of safe and both two superpower as in soviet union not russia soviet union versus america they both decided to show their prowess of their uh, raw industrial might trying to reach to the moon basically that was uh, set as a you know goal post where they will you know compete so both of them tried to reach to the moon but usa won on 20 july 1969 using apollo 11 there were many Apollo missions, but be mindful, some Apollo missions was just, you know, uh, leaving the launch pad, some were like, you know, just uh, going orbiting the Earth, some were orbiting the Moon. So suffice to say, on Apollo 11, they actually landed. And not to mention, so far, only one country has successfully put a man on the Moon. Like successfully, only one country has done. So, why we left? Like if it was done in you know 1970s why haven't we gone back yet first this is crucial aspect many people uh, don't realize this this was a war move this had nothing to do with anything it was a simple war move basically a game of chess where uh, you know if you lose icm icbms will start flying so this was done the moment ussr dissolved which happened in 26 december 1991 there was no longer a threat and you might say there is a bit of gap between uh, you know uh, last moon mission versus uh, this the reason for that is when last moon mission was cancelled at that time it was quite clear soviet union's uh, communist regime was no longer in uh, profit basically so they no longer had rich people to tax they no longer had anybody to tax left so suffice to say they were crumbling at that time so at that time us was like yeah there is no longer a reason to continue this and not to mention they would have cancelled apollo uh, 13 or 14 but apollo 13 accident you know renewed the interest so they got two three more missions out of it so suffice to say the moment apollo mission was done like first mission after second mission everybody was like yeah no interest into it and if apollo 13 incident would not have occurred they would have cancelled the project much sooner so suffice to say this whole idea of like you know oh we went back to the moon back back in those days why we can't go back it's pointless there was no point in it first place it's like you know uh, trying building a you know island base like you will only build it if there is a competition they knew after apollo mission that their competition is over so threat is over and they got the final confirmation in 1991 that's why from that point they never try to go back second this is very crucial and do understand this carefully it was super expensive you are talking about 100 plus billion dollar in inflation compensated it's not like they spent that much money back there, back in that day they spent roughly 110 billion if you want to consider in 2018's money to uh, do that project to give you a context how expensive that is large hadron collider is 10 billion dollar r d budget for a space shuttle is 10 billion dollar now you might say this is still lower than international space station and that would be absolutely true however international space station is a joint venture many countries country on top of country as in from japan to canada to european union all of them contribute a sizable chunk and not to mention russia also contributes a sizable chunk of money infrastructure and those things combined that's why uh, iss even exist no single country as i talk to you has any project matching this scale where the 100 billion dollar was just to uh, you know was spent just to show off like there are some industrial project uh, like building dams or uh, road networks or things of that nature yeah but those are public good this was just to show off basically this was just trying to avoid doomsday situation and not to mention if you have 100 billion dollar what you're gonna do put a man on the moon or buy these and hilariously enough one of them is named peacemaker so suffice to say during the uh, apollo era we learned how to do it we got the idea soviet union started to collapse at that time and the fact that they lost their uh, space might really started to show uh, so all things considered that's why we left it was idiotically expensive and icbms are cheap so these are two core aspects so why china wants to go 
first thing you have to understand i have uh, read some very interesting comments uh, during uh, my lobji episode and i will urge you to watch my lobji episode and there is a lot of detail about that one guy put some very interesting points forward however uh, many people kind of forget that everybody wants to go from india like my own country uh, isro wants to go there russia they want to go there European Union, they want to go there. Everybody wants to go there. So this idea that China wants to go to the moon, that's pointless, that's mute. That's like saying everybody wants to be rich. It's simple. That idea that China wants to go to the moon, that's obvious. Every country, once they reach a certain level of prosperity, they would want to show that they still can grow. And the only place uh, to, for us to grow left right now is space. Second, you have to understand this if done, if you actually go to the moon, you will not necessarily get a, like a, you know, billion dollar new technology. This is a common misconception like, you know, space industry has given us awesome technology. That's absolutely true. But everyone who deals with industry has, a, you know, long data uh, gathering data points. They will tell you that every industry, be it medical, be it computer, be it space reaches a point what we call point of diminishing return so basically the more money you put in not necessarily it's not no longer necessary that you will get the same output as in uh, during the saturn era when saturn 5 was built we learned a lot now did we learn the same amount after doing uh, you know spacex uh, you know spacex booster that we learned? no what we learned we learned how to reignite that engine reliably properly and have a better throttle now, is that the greatest engine ever? No. You, many of you know Space Shuttle engine outperforms it on multiple levels and not to mention Soviet engine still has higher specific impulse. So suffice to say, we no longer are at, at a spot where new things will come out. Will there will be improvement? Yes, undeniably so. But will there be like holy crap solar panels? No, you're not going to get a new solar panel. All you're going to get a solar panel that goes from let's say 20% efficiency will go to 50% efficiency. Now you say that's double the power. Just check the cost is three times more expensive or eight times more expensive. And sometimes the solar cells that goes into satellite, they are eight to 100 times more expensive than normal solar cells. So point of diminishing return has been achieved with space technology. Will we improve our space technology? Yes. Will we get some technology out of it? Yes. Will it be groundbreaking as it used to be? No. Because it's like saying, oh, we created polio vaccine, now we're going to have AIDS vaccine. We're not going to have it anymore. And not to mention there is a financial suicide. Anybody who's spending that much money will no longer be able to profit from it. They're like, yeah, we're not going to invest in it. It's, there is no malice into it. It's very simple. It's like, I will not pour my whole life trying to do something and not get a prof money for it. So this also happens with space like everybody can do it like i did like the idea when elon musk said this one line which was very crucial to get make small fortune in space you have to start with a big fortune so suffice to say there is no longer a point where if you build a let's say a space habitat will you learn new things yes will you be like holy crap we had no idea about this thing now we know now we cross that era that's the whole point the whole usa's uh, industrial might came from the uh, nasa projects from old days but it won't come, uh, you know, it won't be like, holy crap, again, you know, second industrial age will come because of that. We will have new improvements, we'll have fi finer technology, we'll have more polished technology. And there will be challenges that we have to solve. But will that translate directly as older technology did? No. This is a point of diminishing re return. Be mindful of it and be aware of it. And uh, if you are having a hard time understanding this, uh, I will link to a Linus Tech Tips video and even that... Here is specifying Galaxy Note 9, basically Samsung's current flagship. They flat out did not mention performance. Why? They can't push it anymore. They are reaching a point where uh, Moore's law is failing. So this is common. Like uh, right now you can buy an old Intel 4000 series chip and uh, come like literally you will be in the spitting distance of uh, Intel's 8th generation chip. It won't be like groundbreaking. We no longer have that, you know, groundbreaking or from first generation to this holy crap and now it's like okay i'm spending three times more and just getting you know five times more performance so point of diminishing return comes for everything second this however even with this even if you don't get technology out of it it still is a engineering and logistic achievement because the logistic how do you gonna make the transport how you gonna transport everything how you gonna uh, you know employ that many people the logistic nightmare that nasa had to deal with during space shuttle and during saturn 5 it's a testament to their endurance that they successfully pulled it off it must be respected and not to mention 
humans have to go to you know space like that's our final frontier that's like humanity to become something bigger than humanity it must go to space and think of it this way did you worry about last time when your mobile phone had uh, chips made in either korea or uh, china no you don't like do you, did you care your salts and spices there's a very good chance most of them came from india did you care no like you buy things wherever it's available so for as a humanity this whole idea that china is going to the moon it's no longer a threat then why we have so much fear about it why do you see science magazine publishing image like this you know china with long march rocket this rocket supposed to represent long march rocket i have made a video about chinese space agency which you can check out here however be mindful the audio is not great in that so we come back to this whole idea capitalism versus communism now you have to understand the whole this was the core this was the principle that we were fighting for this was the principle because if communism would have won it would have killed public why because public would uh, like public would no longer say okay give us freedom we will give you profit uh, government would say simply see see if i remove your voting rights uh, you know how much uh, space technology will develop if we remove your voting rights how much icbm i can develop who cares about your liberty so this idea of competition was very crucial the idea if a uh, you wouldn't freak out if tomorrow European Union says that they're going to the moon. You'd be like, oh, uh, interesting. I wish them luck. Or uh, you will say the same if India says that. But why people fear from China is the same. We go back to this communism versus capitalism. Like, let's say that happens. But USA takes it in a different way and says, see, if I block YouTube, if I block Facebook, if I, uh, you know, control whatever you do on Internet, I can, you know, put man on the moon like China did. So this is a very severe principle battle. This is not something to be taken lightly. This must be understood that if they succeed, they represent a very serious threat. Like European Union right now is trying to make, become like China. They're like, you know, we're going to censor everything on internet. We're like, hey, if you comment something, police will come to your home. Like this actually happened. And I'm like, what? Like I can't post links uh, if I was in Europe. It's like, what? So as you can see, this I, uh, you know, fight of principle is very crucial and must not be taken lightly. This is where the fear aspect comes from. Second, this will create another cold war. Like now this part, I'm not no longer as worried as I used to be because uh, once I realized cold war never got into hot war because of the cold war itself. If people realize that if they went, uh, you know, uh, attacking us and we went attacking them, we both will be in a situation known as mad mutually assured destruction basically we're gonna kill the planet so like there is no uh, win scenario basically both of them lose so cold war kind of remains in a cold war but accidents do happen somebody might accidentally press a button that should not have been pressed and humanity could die so there is a risk of that now space domination this is everybody's uh, you know uh, go to word like you know china is gonna dominate in space so far all the research i have done only showed me one technology that they are testing out in space if it works can provide them certain edge what is that they basically trying to do quantum encryption on their side communication satellite so basically if they did that successfully they could have agents in china or uh, you know their satellites literally would be unhackable like you cannot do any sort of dat uh, data hacking data mirroring anything the moment you intercept the data it will cut down so basically in physics in theory it's 100 percent hack proof so if they do that they could have a you know a considerable amount of edge in military intelligence and military communication technology however uh, usa is not you know just chilling they are also developing photonics computers basically computers rather than working on the quantum system they are working on photons behavior of photons as many of you know is quantum in nature so suffice to say it's not like even in that even if that works out it's no longer like you know uh, we have this one tool that can destroy us all because mad still exists because and they are building this uh, next generation space station the first station as many of you know have already collapsed and it was like you know uh, the reason is unknown so like there is a malfunction that triggered it to you know fall out of its orbit what we do not know what caused that malfunction so they are building a second one which would be a bigger one however be mindful is still uh, smaller than iss so this is the fear aspect space dominance they're gonna dominate in space and uh, you know this will tr this capitalism versus communism this is very crucial because many of you know even though we know communism always fails communism always comes back venezuela is just dying right now as i talk to you as i talk to you communism is like you know killing venezuela so this battle is uh, very hard fought basically
So what is the reality of this situation? So first I want you to make sure that you understand this. China does not have infinite money. Uh, as I mentioned, like China does not have voting system and they do not have to worry about politics. So they are very efficient with the money. They like they can almost give SpaceX uh, run for their money or Jeff Bezos run for their money. They are that efficient. However, they are not infinite. Like they don't have infinite pool of like, you know, people who are paying taxes. As many of you know, China does not have a very large population that is, you know, uh, making a lot of money. Some people are super rich and most people are super poor. So suffice to say, they don't have infinite money. Be mindful of this. Nobody does. This is what collapsed USSR. And if China continues their uh, stupid path, they might suffer the same fate. However, so far they are like, you know, they understand capitalism is necessary. So they are like letting uh, some places run with capitalism. However, they are controlling the people with communism, letting people work with capitalism. So they are like kind of hybrid system here. But still, be mindful. They don't have infinite money. First, this should help you relax. Second, space is super fragile. This aspect uh, you must understand. So let's say even if uh, China develops some new super powerful laser based satellite, here's the deal, what you have to do to kill it. Send an or orbital rocket somewhere else and just blast it with uh, shrapnel. That's it, you're gonna kill everything in space. I will urge you to look up Girls app. Uh, Casual syndrome. Basically, it's a syndrome. If one geostationary satellite breaks apart, it's gonna send shrapnels, and shrapnels will go down in orbit. As they go down, because they are traveling at uh, upwards of 20,000 kilometers per second, they will crash into things. And the moment they crash into things, they will create more debris. So inherently, killing the entire space is just a fact of taking out one big geostationary satellite. And not to mention, we have something known as graveyard orbit above it. So suffice to say, we have enough thing in space that if you want to kill it, like if USA is like, you know, okay, I'm going to kill China, they can do it. This is like mad again, because if they did that, nobody will have satellites, nobody. So, but it is doable. This is why we have kind of delicate balance here, because China also knows that USA can kill me. USA also knows China can kill me. So both of them have this, you know, delicate balance where they're like, yeah, we're not going to, you know, Acc accidents may happen. Like China recently, uh, many of you have known, Curious Troy made an interesting video on that, that uh, China tried to take out their one of their old satellite using a rocket they launched from a fighter jet. So that was a test system, weapon test, and they wanted to take out that old satellite, but it created way too many debris like 3000 uh, trackable space debris just from china everybody else is 3000 china alone is 3000 simply because of that uh, uh, you know incident one incident caused that kind of catastrophic damage so suffice to say if somebody is like you know really starts to space war it's gonna end more quickly than icbm war now second whatever their really target is they are targeting manned moon mission during 2036 suffice to say this is further than what uh, lob g is so on uh, my video on Logi, you can check out here. So suffice to say, it's not happening today. Like however people are talking about like, you know, China is going to catch up, China is going to catch up. It's not happening anytime soon. Till 2030, there is no plan. Like they don't even, uh, they are not even trying to do it. Now, assuming they are like, you know, they did it in secret, assuming they had like, you know, funneled a lot of money into it and like how Soviet Union did for their ICBM projects. So let's say that happened. Okay, cool. USA has the answer ready. As I talk to you, by the time 2025 comes around, USA will have three rocket system ready, two of which will be reusable. First, SLS, on which my video is already there. You can check out, like this is a super heavy lift rocket. Basically, this is the most capable rocket ever built. It can also exceed uh, basically Saturn V, especially in Bollock 2 configuration where there has much bigger volume of things that it can send into space. And because it's using hydrogen, it can go much faster. Basically, you can send things, big things to Jupiter or Saturn. So suffice to say, if capacity and size matters, we got that covered. Now, what about, uh, you know, we want to send something big, but not that big. We got SpaceX. Now, of course, uh, the only problem I have with SpaceX is their timeline and cost is uh, kind of emotional. However, they will still get it done. Sooner or later, they will get it done. So we'll have second thing. So we will go from 130 to 100 tons. Now, suffice to say, this might still might be too big. We have New Glenn uh, working right now, where, which is being bought by Jeff Bezos in Blue Origin. It will be 60 tons. Two of these are reusable. These things took uh, decades of engineering. We already did that, as in USA already did that. So suffice to say, if tomorrow this happens, so like, you know, tomorrow news breaks out, China successfully lands on the moon, I can assure you in less than five years, USA would have built a base around it. They have the response already. Like, they're like, we got it. We got the response. 
there are two Saturn V. I do not know in what state they exist right now. And there has been some uh, attempts to rebuild that as in because it is very uh, old and simple machine. And the new redesigns that were uh, considered for F1 engines, they will ma uh, make the engine super cheap. They will make it efficient and they will reduce the complexity of the engine as in instead of using 60,000 parts they will reuse only 3,000 parts so suffice to say they will streamline the process and they'll get more powerful engines cheaper engines so they can literally compete with china in less than three to four years so suffice to say be mindful even if china lands on the moon it won't be first because usa already has that now there is an old saying in engineering either you do it first or you do it better USA still has the technology to do it better. So suffice to say, at this point, I will urge you to relax, just chill. No, no, you know, doomsday scenario is gonna happen anytime soon. It could happen if you know USA slips on their wheel or like if their politics goes out of control. It could happen. But as I talk to you, if USA does not fall apart from the inside, you are safe. So this was my presentation on. China's moon mission and this whole fear about China versus uh, USA. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. And if you truly enjoyed it, I would urge you to share it. And uh, I would also urge you to subscribe. It really helps a small channel like me to grow. And if you're free, please press the bell icon. As, as always, thanks for watching.